you will all have made um, three drawings. I'm going to call them three drawings. One of them will be a pattern, another one will be a drawing. It will either be, um, it might be figurative, it might be of people, it might be of the space. You, you, you will have decided that either with myself or in Ray in the studio, if you're working in the studio. Uh, and you will have made a piece of paper black or as dark as possible using whatever means you want, whether that's charcoal, paint, marker pens, repeated patterns. There's complete you know, freedom for you to, uh, um, to do that in the way that you want to. For the purposes of this exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, once you've done the drawings, um, these are actually photocopies of the, of the originals, uh, which you could do as well if you've done a really good drawing and you don't want to cut through the original one. I'm going to put all three in a, in a pile and I'm going to put the black one on top so I can't see what I'm doing. Um, and you'll see the reason for that because I don't want you to cut particular shapes out of the piece and then you're going to Take them down on your cutting mat. Like that, before you start cutting. Okay. Then, get, get your scalpel, standing knife, cutting knife, safety knives are probably the best things to do. And then, you know, I like to describe this as drawing with the knife. You're going to cut through all three layers Simultaneously, you have to press quite hard. But whatever you do, don't cut towards your hand in case you slip, um, because you're going to uh, you're going to press hard, go through all three layers at the same time, and you're going to you're going to draw through um, whether it's something from observation. It might it might be that you're um, cutting in response to a drawing you've made earlier in the day. One of the simple exercises that you've done. I'm just carefully cutting through. I've used rather heavy paper here, which doesn't make it um, particularly easy. But it means I'm having to press a little bit harder. Okay. Um, so I'm going through all three layers at the same time. And you, you know, you may not get. Uh, um, they don't have to be geometric shapes. I'm doing mine are slightly geometric. Some of them might be curved. So there. And there we go. That will do. So I've gone through all three layers. Some of them, if they're still a bit stuck together, you can pull them apart. You may decide to uh, use a combination of knife and scissors, and then use the tape. And I've, what I've got is a pile of pieces um, that I'm going to work with now. Now, for doing this, is um, we've actually got shapes that echo each other. So here I've got the same shape three times. One's got lion on, one's, one's dark, one's got a bit of the pattern. Uh, it's what, you know, so what you're going to do next is the important thing. You're going to use all of these pieces to make a whole series of drawings. Um, now those drawings can be A3, A2, A4, whatever size you like. I'm just going to demonstrate with A2 to start with, just to, um, it doesn't have to be this big, they could be um, as large or as small as you like. It's a, a bit of a game really. You're going to use all of these pieces to make a series of drawings um, where you can mix up and use your pieces in any kind of arrangement um, that you like. And then you're going to fix them down. Um, I'm already quite liking that. <laughs> the, with, as you do this, you can continue to draw into the uh, image. So I've got some of the pens that we used for this drawing here. So for example, you know, if I decide, if I decide, I might be drawing from the original um, subject matter that I was drawing from in the first place, and I might be drawing a cross underneath. I might be deciding to 
I might decide that I'm going to re rearrange the pieces. As you work, what you'll find is to commit to, I've got some Indian ink here as well, um, so I, which is what the, 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 the line drawing was made with. Um, so before you stick anything down, I, I, I quite like that. I'm not sure yet. I think I need a bit more dark in there. You can continue to cut these pieces as well if you, if you choose to. Um, so say I want that, I'm going to cut that into two. I'm not going to cut all of them into two, look at the same shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photograph of that. So here I've cropped in on the image and then what will be really useful to help you to kind of reflect on what's worked and why and which ones you might want to develop further uh, is if you photographed all those different configurations and then you could make them into contact sheets this is something we can show you how to do very simply so here uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit um, but uh, here, here are some of the different configurations that through this workshop I've experimented with laid out in groups of nine and then, um, you know, if you do a lot, it might be that you start with larger groups as a group of 25. Um, but to have that, to be able to look back on that and reflect on which ones you might want to take further is, is a really in, invaluable. Um, uh, and I think you'll all enjoy that and it'll be um, important for you to be able to upload that to your blogs. And then I'm going to put that to one side before I stick any pieces and I'm going to make the, the next one and it might be it might be that uh, as I work and you can use you can use paint you could use colored paper to combine with this um, we've got some colored paper in the studio so I'm, I'm starting to draw I might even decide to trace around that might be fun to trace around the, the shape so I've got I'm doing this very fast so um, uh, decide to trace around the shape. I might even decide to, I might even decide to block that in, um, or add some of the um, similar kinds of, you know, the marks that I've made in the on the paper. I might have some of those, um, put some of those in. You don't have to have bits of every single. Um, drawing in the uh, in the piece in each drawing that's up to you to, for you to decide and it may be these are all quite abstract but it, it, it could be quite figurative it could be that you're creating if you get glimpses of things that are that look a bit more it's, a, say that's somebody's head appearing you'll 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 make decisions about what interests you as you're working and then um, you'll respond uh, accordingly Okay, so the idea is that you're going to do a whole series of drawings, um, incorporate all of these, um, all of these different elements, and you'll be working them. These dark spaces—they're quite difficult. So what I've got here is I've got some. If they dominate too much, you might decide to work with some white paint across them. So obviously, you'll have to wait a bit more for them. For well, I quite like that. That's quite nice. Um, um, so can you see I, I haven't I'm felt like I needed to stick that down before I've I've done I've done that. I might do that and then I might I might decide to move the piece, add another add another piece, whether I cut it or whether I use white paint to, to break the shape up. Um, uh, and again I'm thinking that's that's nearly I quite like that. I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, so I'm going to, we've got plenty of space in the studio as well, so what you can do is you can spread out and put things on the floor to look at them. I'm going to look at those, put these bits aside for the minute, um, and see what I think. And I might take, what I would encourage you to do is to, um, is to do as many different arrangements as you can. And, um, and photograph them, keep re rearranging the pieces, and then if you're, if you're pleased with what you've got, 
Uh, if one of one of the photographs on your on your phone, you think, "Wow, that's you know, I like that. There's something interesting happening there." I think I'd like to um, uh, keep that. Then you might stick those pieces down. Um, you, if you, if there isn't time in the day in the studio, you could just take the pieces home in your portfolio and fix them down. You could use PVA, which would be more secure, or um, you know, if you're in a hurry, you've got print sticks in the studio, you should have those in your art packs as well. Um, you might decide to, you know, start start fixing things down straight away. The, the other thing you can do, uh, which might appeal to some of you, and you're going to be doing this in the online session with me on, uh, well, depending on which day, on which days you have which tutors I'll be doing it with some people Katrina will be doing it with others and Gabriel um, on Fridays Katrina on Thursdays myself I'll be doing it on Mondays um, depending on which day you're doing your online session the other option uh, that might appeal to you is to take your your piece into 3D so if we if we simply fold um, bits of these, uh, you might even decide to incorporate little objects into them. I'm interested, let's make that, let's make that stand up. Um, and I'm, I'm doing this on the, I'm doing this on the, on the drawing itself, because I'm quite interested in the way that that, um, let's have a look, that's quite interesting. Let's pull that forward like that. Um, So I, I might decide that I'm going to make something that's kind of almost architectural um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sense. Um, but I'm playing around with kind of how I can make the paper rigid and stand up uh, and create apertures. Um, and I'm, I might take a series of photographs again. I might do different configurations of these pieces. It might be that I'm using some of the pieces I might be balancing and then looking at and thinking about how can I photograph that in a way that, uh, that, that interests me. I, you know, personally, I find that much more exciting. Not saying you should do that, but um, hopefully you're going to end up with a whole series of, you'll have the, uh, the, a series of drawings and stage uh, in the development of your idea um, towards the realisation of a uh, a set of pieces. It might be that having photographed something like this, a, a 3D setup, um, it might be that that gives you a, an idea for a pattern in itself. You might print the photographs out and then draw paint into those. Um, uh, so there's a, there's a lot of scope for you working in whatever way you want. You might decide that you're going to use coloured paper as a ground to work on. That could work really well rather than just on blank sheets of white paper. But the, the, I, uh, the one thing that I want to be quite fussy about here is I want you to use, I don't want any of your bits, the idea is that you'll have all of your bits integrated into your series of drawings. Some of you may put all of them into three, some of you may spread them across, um, uh, across you know, ten uh, or more drawings, it's up to you. Uh, drawings, collages, paper sculptures. One of the things that I would say which is, you might say, well, why, why, why are we doing that? You know, why, is, why are we cutting through those three layers? What, what's the relevance of that? Partly what's interesting here is we're, we're working with really dramatic contrasts. We're working with uh, a, a contrast of, um, of something that patterns, something that's, that's repetitive, uh, that has a kind of, um, a, that, that's about rhythm, uh, and, uh, and here this is quite rectilinear, it's quite um, geometric. Uh, the drawing is slightly more erratic and unpredictable uh, and open. The pattern sits on the surface, it's flat, as does the black shape. You know, I'm working on a white piece of paper and I'm creating positive and negative areas um, within the within the the drawing by by using a black layer, um, which is quite interesting. I might get here, for example, 
when I've put that black shape, it, it, this dominates, it becomes the focal point in a way that isn't actually that useful. So, or isn't that interesting? I think it takes away from other things. So I'm like thinking about introducing some um, areas um, into the piece to kind of offset that. I quite like the idea of having something that goes to the edge um, that might help to that might help to to frame it. I'm using ink. You could use you could use paper. You don't think it doesn't have to be paint. Um, uh, but you know. I, Already something, something there is starting to happen that kind of interests me. And I'm starting to become more conscious of the white space as the positive rather than the, the um, shapes just sitting on a, uh, an ambiguous open um, space that is the background. Um, move, the, move the pieces. Um, just to surprise myself, I can always move them back. If I've made a record on my phone, uh, before I commit, um, then then I can I've got that option. Um, so I hopefully this is going to be a really productive session, um, and how it will it should generate lots of possibilities. I've had students in the past that have 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 done absolutely extraordinary things where they've um, they've ended up making films of three dimensional constructions uh, that they've made. They've They've, they've made smaller drawings, photographed them, printed out, cut apertures through, and then photographed other, other content, um, whether it's real, live situations, um, through the apertures. That, that, that was very interesting. Uh, if, if you're with me, I will give you further clarification when you're working with me in the studio. Uh, and e equally, if you're with Ian Ray, he'll do the same. Um, uh, he's, he's planning to get you to make you know, some drawings of each other and of the landscape using uh, long sticks, dipping them in ink. Um, so that should produce a really dynamic contrast that will might feed into your, uh, in, into your drawings. Okay, I really look forward to seeing um, what you've done uh, along with the kind of final outcomes that you've um, produced. Okay.